just broke my heart. Honestly, this morning I woke up different. A new reality for Ukrainian Coloradans thousands of miles away from loved ones. And that's my family, so I'm afraid for them. President Biden imposes new sanctions on Russia. Putin's aggression against Ukraine will end up costing Russia dearly economically and strategically. Sanctions not everyone is sure go far enough. No, I'm not going to so they'll work. I'm, I'm terrified they won't work. We have a 360 in-depth look at the developments in Eastern Europe and the impacts we'll see back here at home. Remain strong. We will win because we fight for freedom. And good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Andrew Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Many feared an invasion of Ukraine would come. It has, and now we wait to see how military operations escalate in Eastern Europe. Ukraine's president says 137 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed since Russia's invasion began. Another 316 people injured soldiers and residents. And today, President Biden announced new sanctions on Russia. These target banks, Russian elites, and restrictions on sovereign debt. And we have a 360 in-depth look at those sanctions, including reaction from Colorado members of Congress who say the sanctions are needed, but don't go far enough. And today, Ukrainian Coloradans gathered outside the Capitol to show support for Ukraine. And Governor Polis stopped by saying, our state stands with Ukraine. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez spoke with Ukrainians here in Colorado, unable to reach out to their loved ones. Good afternoon. On days like today, the Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Words don't seem to fully describe emotions. For me, that's unbelievable. From a room inside her Arveta pharmacy. For weeks, we have been warning that this would happen. Julia Ugnovsky and Mitro Sukolsky watched history unfold. Missile strikes began to fall on historic cities across Ukraine. Putin declared his war. Nobody was prepared for that. Nobody. And I still did not, I still do not believe that happened. Both of them have family in Ukraine. The last time they spoke, moments after the invasion began. That's my family, so I'm afraid for them. I did not sleep the whole night because I was talking with my whole family from my side and from my wife's side. But since then, communication has been non-existent. Not since last night. All connections are down. Correct. I don't know how they, how they will survive. Creating a sense of helplessness and uncertainty like they've never felt before. They claim it all the time that they are our brothers, but look how brothers doing. They will occupy the capital of Ukraine and they will put their flag instead of Ukrainian flag and they will establish their government. That's a prediction. That's what he, the freaking Putin wants to do. With no sign of where their families are taking shelter and when they'll hear their voices again, all they can do is hope. We just try to support you as we can and we pray for you. Remain strong. We will win because we fight for freedom. A freedom those here and in Ukraine will not give up without a fight. God bless the people of a free and democratic Ukraine. May Ivan God Rodriguez, then verse seven. And some Republicans have been quick to place blame on President Biden for Russia's invasion. Top GOP officials say the U.S. withdrawal of Afghanistan and soft sanctions on Russia emboldened President Putin to invade. And CU Denver professor Christoph Stiefus says the situation has been escalating though for several administrations. The Biden administration hasn't been long enough in, in, uh, in office to actually make a difference. You know, years and years of neglect, you know, you cannot fix in one year or so in office. Um, uh, the Biden administration can be praised, though, um, because it has really um, united uh, Europe or has helped Europe to unite. It has strengthened the transatlantic relationship quite a bit. Stephen says these new sanctions could help de-escalate the situation down the road, but he also says there's little anyone can do to prevent Ukraine's fall. And Colorado's members of Congress have been vocal all day. Their stances have fallen in line with their party lines. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez continues our 360 in-depth coverage with a roundup of the reactions we've been receiving. Words have a wonderful power. They can be sympathetic and kind, inspiring, enlightening. They can also be harsh and foreboding. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. As the invasion in Ukraine unfolds, there's no shortage of words. What Putin has done is just reprehensible, and the world needs to lie against him. Colorado's congressional delegation making their words known. This is an attack not just on Ukraine, 
It's an attack on democracy. And uh, it is very important that we lower the boom on Putin, that we lower the boom on Russia. Congresswoman Diane DeGette, meanwhile, saying there's a special place in hell for people like Vladimir Putin. She continues saying we will not stand idly by and watch a peaceful nation be overrun in such a brutal way. Who fuel their terror on the world stage. While Congresswoman Lauren Boebert recorded a statement and posted it to Twitter. I call on this administration and my colleagues in the United States Congress to immediately unleash our full energy production capabilities. Republicans taking a very different tone from Democrats, largely focused Focusing on oil and gas prices and blaming President Biden. Congressman Doug Lamborn took to Twitter saying weakness invites aggression. Although the blood of innocent Ukrainians is on Putin's hands, it is Joe Biden's failure that set the stage. In a Newsmax interview, Congressman Ken Buck suggested modernizing America's nuclear weapons stock and said that Putin himself should be sanctioned. While Senator John Hickenlooper. I think we are on the brink of a Cold War. It worries me tremendously. Says he supports the president's sanctions, but when you're dealing with someone like Vladimir Putin. I'm not convinced they'll work. I'm, I'm terrified they won't work. I think they're what we have to do. He worries about an escalation. If we're not careful, this thing could escalate into all-out cyber war. No one has any idea of what that's going to look like. And Congressman Ed Perlmutter said the U.S. and our allies should use every tool in its toolbox to punish Russia while continuing to support Ukrainian sovereignty. Uh, of course, our thoughts and our prayers are with the people of Ukraine as we work with our allies. Meanwhile, Congressman Jason Crow laid out what he wants to see done, including condemning and marginalizing Russian officials and conducting a swift realignment of NATO military posture in Europe. In moments like this, where history is happening, words matter. They can be inspiring or threatening. They can start and stop wars, and they will be remembered. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And Governor Polis is ready to help Ukrainian refugees. Today, he announced plans to write to the State Department, informing them that Colorado is ready to welcome refugees. Polis also wants state agencies to terminate contracts with Kremlin-owned entities. In a statement, Polis says in part, quote, Colorado stands on the side of freedom. War, violence, and chaos threaten the very foundation of the global economy and our national security. He goes on to say, I assure Ukrainians that they have the support and prayers of our state. So let's dig into the impacts we could see here at home. First, the possibility of rising gasoline prices. Both Russia and Ukraine are big oil exporters. And Jack Strauss of the University of Denver says, though, don't panic just yet. If people take this, take this as it is, it's a uh, very large problem in Central Europe or Eastern Europe, but it, it's not a large problem for the U.S. We're, you know, we're, we're 70,000 miles away, right? And so we, we pump plenty of oil for ourselves, right? And so uh, please uh, don't panic here. Strauss adds that it could take anywhere from four to six weeks to feel direct impacts. The U.S. also has oil in reserve if needed. Now, Wall Street will remain volatile after a sharp sell-off today. The Dow actually ended in positive territory after President Biden announced those new sanctions against Russia. Now, as this develops, make sure to download the Denver 7 Plus app for your streaming device. There you'll find constant updates throughout the day as new information comes out of Europe. Denver police arrested 42 people around the bus terminal area of Union Station yesterday. Police say they were focused on those with outstanding warrants and those involved in illegal activity. Chief Paul Pazin says officers will continue to focus on violent crime, property crime and narcotics related crime. And keep an eye out for this car across the metro. North Glen police say this white four door Mercedes may have been involved in a road rage shooting yesterday morning happened near 104th and I-25 near the Best Buy. Thankfully, no one was hurt in that shooting. Colorado is working to make big investments in electric vehicles. And today, Denver Mayor Michael Hancock joined U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to show off successful investments we've made so far. One is the Colorado Car Share Program. It's kind of a short-term car rental where you only pay for what you use. And all the cars in the program are either hybrid, electric, or fuel efficient. A user of the program explains how it helped her. For me, it's like a win-win-win. I really care about the environment. I'm really fed up with these fire seasons. Um, I like saving money, and I love that it gives people access um, because it's not only access to the vehicle to use around town, but it's also access to the mountains. In August of 2020, Denver allocated $300,000 of the Federal Cars Act money to deploy seven electric car share vehicles. High schoolers face so much pressure trying to figure out what the future holds. Well, these counselors from the Denver Scholarship Foundation are trying to make it a little easier. They are answering calls right now about financial aid, and they say even if you don't know your plans or you think your plans might change, you still need to fill out a financial aid application. 
We want them to have it prepared in case, you know, come May, come graduation, or even in the summer, they decide, I do want to actually start a program. And there is no penalty for completing the free application. All right, so here's that number if you want to call them, 303-777-7492. And these counselors will be answering that line until 6.30 tonight. We get back to the 20s today. There are 60s coming up in the 70s. A weekend ski trip goes downhill quickly. Before we knew it, a couple of seconds later, she was calling CJ saying that she had ran away. This story ends with a smooth landing. Oh, mama! Yeah! Yeah! 